and gentlemen. How about a nice round of applause and a warm welcome for Mr. Josh Nichols. All right, thank you for that, Joel. So we're, uh, we're still waiting on our student or victim or whichever you want to call it. She should be here right away. But uh, <clears throat> until she gets here, we're going to play and talk about some things. Some of you may have been with me uh, over the last couple days as we've been talking about certain things, certain pieces. I hope that <clears throat> for any of you that were able to watch my, my info sessions, that <clears throat> you can start seeing things maybe from the perspective that I'm, that I'm talking about. So I'm just going to start moving his feet. He's, he has been in the stall for a while. These kind of deals end up allowing that, and that's okay. Um, but what we want to see is, is I'd like to just see how he wants to move. So I'm going to start just talking you through it. And we uh, were talking in our info session that we want, to, we want to really see a horse make a change from behind. And the things I do with a horse through their head and neck, or their shoulder, excuse me, and their pole and their hindquarters, all need to work together as one so that the hindquarters are the active point. So when I start, remember we discussed that the top line of the horse needs to be turned off. I'm just going to take that rein down. It'll give him a little bit more room to reach. Sometimes when we play with some of the liberty work, I'll stick that rein on the horn so that he can... Um, the, the rein is a little more secure. So when you start, it doesn't matter if you want to walk like this. If you're going to walk here, you have to be a little more attentive to what's happening beside you. Because it, what oftentimes happens is, is when a person is walking straight, we're not really sensing what's happening behind us. And what sets a tone is that that inside shoulder can start falling. So whether I am just asking him to drop his head, had a really good conversation with a couple gals regarding that. Oh, here she comes. She just wanted to make an entrance. Sheesh, that's an Andalusian. <laughs> oh, there she is. No, no worries. As long as you're here, that's all that matters. Good. Okay. So, all right. So what I'm thinking is that we'll, uh, I'd like to take you through a couple of the steps I want to work with him on. I'm going to demonstrate a few things and then I'm going to have you kind of try some of this stuff. <clears throat> so, okay. So the first thing that we need to see, so we talked about the top line muscles and I call the top line a horse's defensive line. And what I mean by that is that as soon as a horse gets anxious, they get tight. And we showed in some of those pictures that when that happens, the horse's spine drops and their weight goes more onto their front end. When that happens, the hindquarters can't really reach. So this causes the horse to continue falling forward, making your reins tend to get, become heavy and the horse to fall out their shoulders and also possibly speed up, okay? So they're losing their balance. The first thing I wanna see is that the top line's off. So as you're walking, you're not trying to force the horse to drop their head, but you want to just feel the tension. That was yesterday's demo. That yeah, was. Yeah, we worked on that with Jackie. Okay, sensing a softness. That can kind of be a simple exercise as walking here. But if the horse's top line's on, you're not getting much done. So whether you're doing that in hand or whether you're doing that in your ride, you need to be able to get that to happen. From here, what I do is now I want to move the shoulder. As the shoulder moves, I rotate the pole. And then you can start seeing him step underneath himself. Okay? And when we establish that, there we go, with a bit of impulsion, you start seeing a carriage change. Now I want you all to recognize I'm not trying to make him look like anything. I believe when a horse starts to carry themselves right, that, it, that, that look happens naturally. And that's really what I'm after. So there has to be a certain level of impulsion. I want to see that shoulder elevated. I want to see his jaw rotating to the left or his pole. Excuse me, I, I use those things interchangeably. Sometimes that doesn't help make sense of things, but as his pole rotates, the hind leg steps under. Okay, so these are the first two steps. We'll go through them again. First, I want to sense that when I ask him to soften down, 
just like I did with Jackie. Now the horse is able to walk with a relaxed top line. From there, I activate the shoulder. I want to see that shoulder move. Then see that I can turn his head slightly. And what that does is that makes that hind leg step under. There, you can see his inside hind leg there. Can you see that? This hind foot stepping there, good. So what that means is from his pole to his hindquarters, the top line is off enough that the hindquarters can reach. I want you to think about that. You remember the demo we did or the lecture I gave? When the horse's top line tightens, this leg can't reach under. So now it becomes stuck and you cannot. So what, what happens is then if you're asking for a horse to carry themselves, you're going to get a lot more head and neck now, but they're still going to feel like they're pushing forward. All right, so let's just see this on the other side now. <clears throat> want to see a little forward and purpose? Good. So now I guess I should start with step one. If I'm going to ask you guys to do it, I better do it myself. All right, top line seems pretty good. He's in a good state of mind. You can feel that in him too. Then the shoulder. Now watch as the shoulder moves. The jaw or the head turns slightly to the right when I request that. And then the hindquarters can step under. Good. And you should feel there's a nice reach to that. All right. And here's where the balance comes with my reins. So I want to use my reins in such a way that the rotation of the pole, a slight rotation of the pole, activates the hindquarters to step more. So I'm going to keep a nice flow. And if I rotate his pole, that hindquarter should step under more. Good. Excellent. Good. So you should see that. You see it's pretty easy for him to go sideways. I'm trying to slow that down just enough that you can see it. So I want to keep a forward. Feel his hindquarter step under and go across. Now you see with the lightness, there's very little there. I'm able to allow his hindquarters to take his front end sideways. Can you see that? So it's his hindquarters stepping under and propelling him sideways. How else can a horse go sideways? What would be another way that we could see him go sideways? Well, there's a real easy way, and this is oftentimes how horses go sideways, and it's right here. All that's happening is his shoulders falling this way, and his hindquarters is following. This actually promotes a negative, because now the horse has lost his balance. So I want to keep him as straight as possible. I'll do this one more time coming back towards you. And uh, hopefully you can see the difference. Shoulder stays elevated. Hindquarters starts to step under. There we go. And you can see the difference in the straightness of the horse. That his hindquarters starts to propel him sideways and he's not falling. What do you see differently here? You see two things. On one hand, you see that my reins are pretty stinking light. I'm not really making anything happen because I'm trying to promote um, a, a self-carriage. You guys remember the difference when the words we talk about. Self-carriage means what? Pretty straightforward. It means he's carrying himself. Okay, so when it's him carrying himself, he's stepping under. He's holding his own front end up and he's taking himself sideways. So in this, I'm just trying to take a second to help and activate what I was talking about in our last info session, where we need the horses to make a change from behind. Now, you know, this is hilarious. Well, I think it is. I brought this horse here because he's been one of the hardest horses I've ever schooled. I had intended to help have a conversation about working high energy horses. And you guys are all looking at me like, oh, I think this guy's out to lunch. If that's high energy, he needs to see some other horses. But he is actually quite a high energy horse who is you know, working through some things for sure and making some changes. But the idea is, is that it's taken a lot of consistent work to get him to a place where he stays calm and rhythmic. All right, so now you notice, all I'm looking for is three points. And, and you notice how you start seeing changes that look, you might say, like he's carrying himself or he's collected. So the word collection, we think a lot of the neck. And collection again is of what? What have we learned from our time together? When a horse is collected, that means they are using what? They're engaging their hindquarters. All right, so let's just take that. Keep the balance. Step that into the trot. 
Good. Keep that moving. Keep the shoulders elevated. Good. And now we should feel like the reins are connected, but there isn't weight in my hands. The hindquarters should still continue forward, and there should be a balance. The reins are connected all the time because we want to keep him balanced. Good. Back to the walk. Reorganize here. Back to the walk. And find the balance. We'll let him get that out. Good. Okay. <clears throat> Dana, do you have any interest in trying some of this? Do you want to get off and try some things? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's going to be our next step. Probably a little. I haven't done it. You haven't done it in the groundwork? Sorry? Yeah, okay. Because I'd like to just talk you through each thing we do, and then we'll ride together. It's going to be a bit of a different format, but I'd sure like to see when you're playing with this balance, what your horse is showing you. <clears throat> to me, when we're asking the horse to come together, there should be a balance in when we are asking them to move their body first, there should be a real clean flow. So again, I'm just going to finish this part here. Ask him to come forward. Not looking for him to, that's it. So I'm looking for a change in his hind quarters. And you'll notice when he gets that, he starts to sit more. And there's a balanced picture to it. Shoulders stand up, rotation stays. And this is very lateral when I'm playing with. Good. That's it. As we get this in a more refined way, we start playing with this at a distance. And you see, forward, trot. And we just want to see that we can keep the three balance points together. Hindquarter stays active. Shoulder stays elevated. Come forward. That's it. And we just keep the balance moving forward. Good. And if you can notice, you see when he gets it right, I want you to feel my reins, guys. Good. Keeping the impulsion, keeping the balance. Look at where his head posture is. Tut, tut. Forward. <clears throat> where is that sweet spot? There we go. Good. 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 All right. So this is a spot where I'm actually looking for a less dramatic look and an active hindquarters, more than I'm looking for an active look. And if we're, what I mean by an active look is that you would see a lot more of his movement happening in his head and neck. This horse is soft enough, he would bend his head and neck if we asked. Hey, I just did that side. Back to this side for one minute. Then I'm going to work with Dana a little bit on on this same request. One more time. Shoulders. Getting the shoulder balanced. Feeling the pull. Feel the hindquarter step under. I'm going to step laterally first. Feel him step to the side. Again, the aid should be very light. Good. 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 So we want to sense that he's stepping under himself, he's balanced, and the reins are very light. Again, the guidance of self-carriage means that you're not forcing or making things happen. Good. Excellent. The head is slightly above the withers. Good. Good. Okay. Hopefully that step makes sense to you. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about and how the process of that activates a change. Okay. Dana? You were waiting on a tool. Okay. All right. Yes, it supports the change for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the center here and we'll see how that feels for you. <clears throat> Good. <clears throat> I don't think you're supposed to look classier than the clinician. This is not fair. Ah, there it is. I had more oh, there you go. Good, good. <clears throat> okay. All right. So when you first walk, 
So if you can, are your, split, are your reins split? Okay. So what I want you to do with your rein first is, so as she's, okay, let's just talk about some details first. So just walk your circle, give yourself some space and walk your circle. We're just gonna talk about how she's using her body and then we'll get to the, the detail. So when you connect with your bridle, all I want you to do is on your inside rein, you're trying to take the bit out of the equation by taking your hand slightly down. So you're talking to the crown strap, you're not talking to the bit in its movement. Is that clear? Now just see if you can touch your rein and ask her to soften and lower her head. Do you feel a change when you do that? Good. So can you feel a tension in that? Yeah, okay. Now make sure your arm is staying very relaxed. There you go. Now relax your hands. Good. Good. So again, it's important that she relaxes her back, that you get a change in her top line before you can activate the hindquarters. There you go. That's it. Okay. Lots of little things, eh? You guys, you guys tend to kind of pick at each other at all? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <clears throat> okay. Now, this is sometimes a challenging way, but I will sometimes do this. When I'm doing this in handwork, I will walk backwards, okay? Some folks have a hard time with this, and I, and I understand that. But what I'll do is I'll actually carry my stick like this. <clears throat> and what I'm doing is I'm actually activating the whole line. And what this does is this can stop the picking on each other. So if the horse brings their head towards me, the stick might touch them, but that's not me kind of whacking at them as much as it's them just learning this. Good. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, it's important because you, you, you have to get away from picking at each other for the mare to think about something new. So when you're walking that way, it's actually going against what you need to get done. So there we go. So envision what you're doing with your stick is you're holding space. You're, you're filling the space, you know, and it's not the stick really, but it's what the stick represents. Yes, there we go. Now with your hips, think about her shoulders and then raise your stick. That's it, good, and just, yeah, that's right. Fill the space until you feel the shoulder move. Good. So if we sense in these moments hesitation for that shoulder to move, this in itself will be one of your biggest signs that a horse can get heavy in your hands. Because if you cannot move the shoulder side to side, the horse can always leverage the reins with weight. Okay, so one of the most important things you can start with in this work, once you have touched the rein and you sense your horse is soft, remember, when you can get that, it tells you something about the horse's state of mind. All right, that's a big deal. Start with this always. Secondly, by engaging the space, you should feel that's right. And you've got to get to where you kind of walk like you're a lot bigger than you are. Yeah, that's right. And you're working in Andalusian, remember that. Stand up. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Good, you got it. Excellent. Okay, so when you get into a spot where this starts to make sense, then you can start touching your rein. Now, okay, so the next part to this is you gotta be careful that you're not taking your bit sideways. With the bit you have, you have a similar bit that I do right now. And if, when you touch the bit, if you're not careful, it actually pushes into their cheek a bit. And then you're also pulling your nose sideways. So these bits are set up more along a, a longitudinal axis rather than a lateral axis, where a snaffle can be lateral. You see the difference? So now put your slack into your other hand, and I want you to be able to use the rein if you watch. I want to set up all the time, watch this, that my rein is touching um, inside. So again, forward, we'll just get a moving again to be fair to Cruz. <clears throat> okay, space. Good. Now my rein is just twirling him laterally. Okay, can you see that? And the best way to tell that you're getting it, look. Good. You should see this, and this is where my liberty work comes in. That I can take the shoulders, work the pole, and then release. Now his hindquarters holds that up. Can you guys see how he is retaining that rotation, the shoulders and the pole, all by himself? So I love to test that liberty. I love to test that liberty. This tells me something about his commitment to me, but it also tells me something about my work. Again, shoulders, pull, good. Get a little bit more change, that's it. My boundary's good. not working anymore. Your boundary's not, ah, she's taking care of that boundary, isn't she? <clears throat> okay. What would you do, like I would go to smack her? You wanna smack her? 
Yeah, I understand. So you guys are funny. You have quite a fun relationship. Yes, very good. You know, it's always good too when it's not your stick. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> awesome. So, yes, and your mare is uh, you and her, and we do this, right? We get into a relationship, we have these certain things that we just allow because it's like, well, whatever. I understand, tit for tat. Okay, so, yes, when you're working, this is how I go. When I'm working, when I'm not working, different. So I'll change my energy and I'll participate. This guy is also quite mouthy. He likes to, you know, nibble on my shoulder and talk and stuff. And some people think, that's terrible. I think there's a difference between having a personal moment and also working. And they have to know the difference. Okay, so, stick. <laughs> yes, that's right. And well, that's all you had to tell her. You just never told her that. There we go. <laughs> so stick, that's it. That's it. Now be very clear with your energy about that shoulder. Be very specific. Move that shoulder now with intention. There. Now feel your rain. This is what I want. You feel your rain. Move the shoulder and feel the rain. Move the shoulder and feel the rain. You're going to tell the shoulder moves enough, the jaw is going to rotate on its own. This is the next deal, guys. If you can get the horse's shoulder to move laterally enough, they're actually going to take their head to the left autonomically because of balance. Remember, do some of you remember what I called the head and neck? The great cantilever. Okay? If the shoulders are falling, the head's going to go a certain way just to catch their balance. There you go. Now make sure with your hand that you're not pulling sideways. This is the next deal. There you go. That's it. Yes. And now relax your rein. Let her carry it. Let her carry it. Now move the shoulder. Good. That's it. Good, good. It's okay. Remember, don't pull your hand sideways. Because the top of that bit pushes into her cheek. So I'm feeling energetically that her shoulder is coming toward me and I'm moving away. Yes. Okay. Now there's two things happening. Let me show you. But it's because of the way you use your hands. Watch. You go like this, then you go like this. And you go like this, and you go, your hand takes your energy away. Okay, so, so those are where the things are contradicting. That's why I'm saying yes. Well, think about what you want her to do. See, and this is again where we really get focused on the gear. What is it achieving, right? So when you pick your rein up, so I'm going to move the shoulder. Come in and move this. Pick him up a bit. Now watch. I'm going to move the shoulder. There. See? See, there's the sweet spot, guys, where... See, now, all it is is a touch for him to bend like that. Good. Okay. But if you don't get the balance right, they will never do it. Now, in this situation, I just think that your tendency in the way you use your rein is that you pull it across. So then that's going to pull her shoulder back towards you. This is funny how we get it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good. So you st there, and if you watch, guys, when she gets it right, you watch the mare's hindquarters. She starts tracking up better. So a horse has the ability because they don't have shoulder blades or uh, what am I saying? Collarbones. Okay, they don't have collarbones. So their spine can float and lift and go sideways and go. There you go. There you go. Can you feel the difference? Good. Now put your stick like this now along the body. Feel the balance. You see now my Andalusian wants to eat it. We're serious here, buddy. Stop fooling around. <laughs> yeah, we might get, this might get entertaining for everybody. Okay, look at the difference now. Can you see? So giving you and her a little space, picking on each other less, feeling the space better, helps her hold her shoulder up, and then rotate the pole, and now everybody watch the inside hind leg. It starts to step under and support the balance. And you see the mare is holding her own balance now. Can you guys see the difference? When that shoulder was falling in, the mare was fidging her head all the time. When you were pulling the rein in, it was taking the mare off balance. So the question here always is, are you adding to your horse's balance or taking it away? If you're taking the balance away, if you're taking it away, they're always going to fuss with their head and neck because they've got to catch their balance. If they're falling, they're going to throw their head and neck. Well done. <laughs> now we're resting. She can eat my stick. <laughs> This is, so I wonder, how did you get involved in this? How did I let you in? <laughs> you see what happened? I didn't know you well enough. I would, someone should have helped me on this. Okay, try the other side. <laughs> yeah. Yes, now we're serious again. Okay, let's see it. It is, because you and this mare have a neat relationship. 
Look at that brow bat. You know, this is, this is a serious deal. <laughs> okay. So again, feel the shoulder, activate the reins, then, then leave her alone. There, there. Top line is off. Shoulder's good. Jaw is good. Hips are good. Now who's holding up who? You see? You start getting that balance to feel right, she starts tracking up. And you see now, guys? No fidgeting. Now, you've already got a little bit of your liberty work going, but do you see how this complements it? It makes it easy. There you go, for the merit. That's it. Hopefully everybody can start seeing the difference between self-carriage and health frame and how liberty work can complement that. Okay, so we're not here to kind of unpack every piece of this, but you can see that when we get that, that right, her head is calm, her back is long, and she's using herself correctly. So I tend to start with what the shoulders are doing. Yeah, you're doing great. Do you feel the difference in how she's not fussing on you anymore? I know, I don't, I don't like the feeling when she does. No, it doesn't feel good at all. Well, because you're not, in those moments, I, I think the difference is you're not really clear between when you're working and when you're not. So the mare doesn't really, you know, she kind of fudges between the two because you're not, your line's not clear enough. Okay, so, okay, now, so that's step one, well done. A nice change. You see the mirror more balanced. You feel it? Okay. Next step is where, see, if you always use your inside rein, what is the risk of overusing your inside rein? Well, they can lean in, they can overbend their neck, they can, you know, disengage their hindquarters. See, all those things, are all those things positives? Well, they could be, if that's what you wanted. But anything overdone has a negative. So the value of this is then to find out what does it mean to find the center. So developing straightness means you need to feel both sides of your horse. Okay, so now, do you remember when I started taking my outside rein? Yes? Okay, so we're going to start here. Step one. Okay, what's step one? Ask her to soften and lower their head. Relax. Good. Move the shoulders. Rotate the pole. Activate the hindquarters. Good. So he starts seeing the step and you can start seeing him pick himself up. He starts to track under and he starts to balance. Okay, now if I kept overusing my inside rein, look, I can start getting him to overbend his neck and that's when I lose my straightness. So now I'm going to just gather my outside rein. And as I gather my outside rein, now we're going to see him start to step under himself more. Good, there we go. And we want to try to keep him balanced. So I use my outside rein to find the balance between the two before I go to the trot. And see, now he's going to have a little bit more balance. <clears throat> Some of these things might seem pretty subtle in the beginning, but what I hope you can see is just that a horse is able to stay engaged, to use themselves correct. Lots of walking. And then we have lots we can play with here. The more a horse sits, the more upright the trot. Oh my goodness. Good, man. Good. Okay. Until we can get to a place where we can trot pretty fast, pretty slow, and maybe even in place. Okay. What is it that causes a horse to trot straight up and down? Maybe I have to whack his legs or get after him. Well, maybe. Oh, who said that? Well done. You betcha. The more a horse gets under themselves, the more they push upright. Now you just take the line of force and you change it. Okay, so instead of the horse now pushing here, which I can show you in a basic movement that he can just push forward, but if you walk that hindquarters under more and more and more and add four, oh, now we're starting to go straight up and down. So then to ask a horse to do something a little more demanding, it's not necessarily difficult. Is it demanding? Sure it is. Do you see him thinking about that more? Sure you do. It's not super easy. So I'm not gonna hold him and cram all that together. But this is what we're trying to do. But first of all, you need to get a base of that. Okay, let me see you. Again, own that space and get serious. Now, I don't, when I say get serious, I'm not saying get mean. Because having a boundary should not be an emotion. And if it does, you're going to struggle. That's it. So, yeah, totally. Yes. This pattern. Okay, number one, walk with an ownership. Good, good. And, and own your space with your stick, but talk to your space, not her. 
Here's the problem I find. If someone owns their space, like you know you're pretty okay with your own space, and you'll use pressure, you'll get a change really well. But for a person who doesn't think about their own space and feel it within themselves, every time you use a pressure, most of us will do this. Because we don't really want to do it. We've got a confusion in our minds about what pressure's getting done. So then we actually back away energetically. So what I'm actually telling the horse is, when I use this pressure, I don't mean it. I don't actually mean it. You see, he's kind of like, what are you doing? So then we got to get really big and we're not getting much change. And you see this with folks all the time. So what I want to see you do is I want to see you put your, your Andalusian uh, queen face on. You know, it's like, raw. Well, you got to work it. Own that space and not as an emotion. Just own it, you know. Good. And then put your stick beside you. Move it. That's it. And own it. It's, again, it's not so much about the horse as it is about you. What kind of space are you able to occupy for yourself? There you go. Good. That's it. But as people, we spend very little time thinking about our own space. We don't communicate in our space. Most of us stay between our ears. There's not a lot coming out of us. Ah, there we go. Good. Now use your outside rein a little bit. Use your outside rein. Watch this. Connect with your outside rein just a little bit. You're going to get a lot less head poking towards you. You tend to pull that bit towards you. You're actually asking her to pull her head in. Do you understand? So by coming in with your outside rein a little bit, you find a straightness. There we go. Now use your inside. I know this is a lot of details. There we go. There. There. Good. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Now our shoulders stand balanced. Slow with that. No. Well, of course, yes. But you can't react like that. You went, Bleh. I talked to Jackie about that yesterday. Jackie made a nice change on this. How you respond to a resistance promotes resistance or promotes change. If someone, you know, the horse reacts and then you react who's leading who the horse just led you to doing that you're following them so respond with the flow you want to see i always say this it's kind of cheesy you got to be the change you want to see right that's like a facebook post or something you know be the change you want to see. but it's kind of true right you want your horse to stay calm you want them not to react quick well then you better react the way you want very good stay yes and then when she's right lower your stick just stay consistent but this mare got this little thing going on. And this is awesome because they're on stage. But all of us kind of have that going on. We all have something going on like that. Now, do not let her finish with that in her mouth. Because that's part of what she's waiting on. Oh, now we're done. And I can chew on a stick. And, okay. All right. Is this making sense? So that's where I would say we're going to kind of hit our ceiling for this right now. Is, again, you need to get these shoulders to start waiting for you. I want you to do that not by picking at her but by owning it, okay? There needs to be a feel in you that allows your horse to sense this change, all right? Once that changes, you can start using your inside rein. Your inside rein should cause you to feel like you can rotate the pole. If they're bending their head too much, use your outside rein. So you don't have to keep confronting her nose. So it helps you because you don't have to pick at her nose anymore. Pick at her nose, that sounds funny. Don't pick her nose. <laughs> yeah really eh? and that is like your leg this is where we're headed in the riding you need to use this stick like your seat and leg most of us are overriding the heck out of our horses laterally with our our um, our reins the horses fall in we grab our reins now you're actually talking to the farthest point of imbalance from the hindquarters and you're giving them something to lean on when you go to your reins we need to do it just like this. And this is the model, okay? What, do you know what I'm talking about? I'm really getting serious here. I'm pointing this right at you. <laughs> you better be. I was pretty, pretty intentional there. Okay, when you sit there and you put your leg on, it should do everything you're saying with that stick. And I'm going to show you when I get on him. Okay? Make sense? All right. So I'm just going to do one more thing. I kind of did it a little bit there, but we're going to do it again just to have some fun. All right, wake up. Hard for a demo horse, eh? Especially when all he'd like to do is sleep, which is, for any of you that know this guy, he's not necessarily his character. All right, find the balance. Get myself organized. Shoulders, pull. Trot. As he gets more collected, 
We're gonna let it move a little bit. Good. So the trot can be more elevated, keep the life. Good. See, I can get more and more engaged. There we go, there we go. Keep a flow, keep an uprightness. And now, move his feet. The way I get the life in so much of the movements is by saying purposefully, I'm gonna ask him something, then we're gonna use it. Again, watch the throughness, feel him coming through his body. Now we're gonna dance right back to that. Ah. Good. No matter the gait, no matter the movement, there should be a relaxation. I want his head to stay the highest point of balance. I'm not out of shape. Okay. You can't hear it. There's no getting away with it on this end. Okay. You notice, so we say sit, gather up. And how do you build power in the short steps? Do something with it. The other way is, you gotta build it up. I find most horses get irritated by this. I don't want him to get irritated with me. I don't want him to dance because he knows I'm gonna twack him. Okay? What I want is hit a belief, hey, we're gonna go somewhere. This made the most sense for me on cows. Go. Build, do something. Build, do something. Because then they build knowing it's like, I'm going to use this. This is a purpose. So as you start to get her to sit, you start getting her to use herself. Put purpose into the things you're doing. Ask her to sit in the trot, and now use it. Does that make sense? Okay. Do you want to do something again? Okay. All right. Any questions about that piece? It's fun, hey? Uh, and that's the hard thing to lose. Okay. To retain the throughness in the back and the activity in the legs, if I add pressure he can't soften to, you lose the buoyancy. Now you have legs that are going like this. See, I do a really good demo. Versus this. See? Just remember that, you guys. You guys saw that. <laughs> yeah, they saw that. That's right. My good side. Oh. Ah, and that is the art. Okay, we can, it's not, it's not a big deal to make horses do stuff. The difference is shaping and molding. Ah, it's what just gets me. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of easy for us to force our way through stuff. The art is when you can shape it. You retain the calmness and you shape the body, okay? Do we get it right all the time? No, I'm like a professional mistake maker. But that's why I succeed, honestly, because I will never give up. I will keep trying, and I will keep trying. And the only thing that the horses ask us for is to take care of them. Do your best to not sell out on me. <laughs> you know, really. Okay. Awesome. So does that make sense, guys? So some nice moments there where you see him sitting back and starting to go up and down, and you can see the buoyancy in it. That's what we were just conversing about there, sensing him come up and down. Do you see him having, do you see the possibility of him kind of getting worried a little bit? Sure you would. Because it's a lot more. I'm asking a lot of him. So that's why you just don't get in a rush. Take your time. Have some fun with it. So again, we're starting to talk about activating what? Self-carriage. Okay, I heard the hindquarters. Very good. The hindquarters activate self-carriage. Now the horse is holding themselves up. Then it's all about building up energy and not losing it. What happens when we put our leg on most of the time? Most horses just go flat forward. Okay, you can train a horse lat, uh, flat, turn left, turn right, Go forward, go back. This work trains them three-dimensionally. That's the fun part. When you're sitting on a horse that's activating their hindquarters, ooh, ah, it's fun. Okay, and that's really what we're after in this whole deal. Trying to shape that up. Keeping their mind, activating their hindquarters. We better get on and do something. Oh, yeah, sure, that's a good idea. Now, I understand. As you can see, I've been gifted with height. 
Don't, who, who's laughing about that? That's not funny. <laughs> yeah, they were only laughing at you, not me. All right, good. Okay, now, what's the deal? We're going to see if we can do that in the riding. Have some fun and let these Andalusians show themselves a little. <clears throat> does, a, does a quarter horse move the same way an Andalusian does? No, they don't. Does that make a quarter horse bad? No, nope, it doesn't. Because every, every, every horse, every animal has an advantage and a disadvantage. Good. Wait. Okay. <sighs> ah, mounted. What's that? I know. Just feels good. All right. So first exercise. Um, I'm going to have you, uh, I'll tell you, you can try it, then I'm going to have you watch me. And I'm going to put myself in a far superior position to not get in the way. Those are good seats. Did you guys earn those? You did? You just, just took them. them. Well, wow, good deal. <laughs> hmm. All right. I'm going to know that for next time. OK, feel your reins right now. OK. Now, just connect to your reins. Don't pull on them. Now, I want you to use your inside leg just a little bit and feel your inside rein. You should feel when you get a change, you should feel that there, 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 there. Feel that? Excellent. What just happened? OK, why did she soften? She got tired of not softening. That is an option that I don't think was the answer. She got tired of not, well. Did you learn anything on the ground? OK, let's start again. OK, everyone, we're going to just take that back a couple minutes. Go ahead. So when you pick up your, or you feel your reins, and you put your inside leg on, what part of her moves that don't pull on your rein? What part of her moves to soften the rein? She saw her shoulder moved and her balance changed and she softened the rein. That's a great answer. Okay, well, uh, maybe. But when the balance, so when you're touching your inside rein, she predominantly anticipates dropping her inside shoulder because she thinks you're going to overuse your reins. And uh, see all the, her head to the left all the, or to the right all the time? You see, because she thinks you're going to use your reins, but you're not fixing the balance. Okay, so I want you all to envision this. Let's say uh, Claudia. Let's say Claudia and I are walking along. And I have a rope in my hand. She has a rope in her hand. And every once in a while, Claudia would do this to me. She gives that rope a jerk. Oh, okay, we're walking along. She does that again. Pretty soon, what am I going to do? I'm going to start leaning the other way. Because I don't know when she's going to pull on that rope. So what you're doing here is because you go to that rain first, She's always, so then this puts people into a belief that says, oh, I gotta use that rain more. Well, now you're using the problem and you're creating more problem. Okay, when you feel the mare in your reins, this is the first step of this work. Now put your inside leg on, make sure you do not lean in. Think of your outside seat bone, use your inside, that's it, there, relax everything. Look at the difference. A physiological change that changes autonomically because the mare follows your seat and balance. You know what, your mare doesn't actually wanna fall down. A horse never wants to fall down, neither do you. So your body will always adapt and is always adapting outside of your awareness. So you can actually get a horse to saw it. Now do this. Use your left leg gently. Try not to squeeze. Activate with energy. There, there. See the shoulder? The shoulder starts. Now again, left leg. There. Good. Do you understand? You use your left leg to soften your left rein. I know this sounds crazy. We're just talking about the basics here. This advances as we go along. There. Now look at the rotation. Now use your inside rein. You use the inside rein when it becomes available, not when the horse is doing something wrong. Wow. It kind of changes things, doesn't it? You use your inside rein when it's available, not when the horse has done something wrong. How many of us would say that we will use our inside rein when our horse is doing something we don't want? It's pretty common. Yeah, you would say that, of course. That's common. We just pull them around, you betcha. That's a more defensive strategy. 
Okay, and there's eight. There's moments, and that'll serve you. That'll serve you. All right, my turn, okay? Yeah, Cruz, yeah. That's how I get started. <clears throat> okay, so now Cruz has a general sense of this, but I want to get to a place where I can feel my reins. I'm going to position his shoulders where I want. Okay, I'm going to use my left leg. Look at the left rein. Okay, we should feel a softening. There we go. Oh, don't shake your head. That doesn't help people see what you're doing. Left leg and oh, forward. Let's just get moving here a little bit first. All right. A little bit left leg and the rein starts to soften to the, right, to the left. Can you see that? Just a little rotation in his left jaw. It's very subtle because it's not super. We're not, I'm not asking him to get a big bend. You understand? I just want to feel a little balance. Now let's just take this to the trot. I just want to trot him just because he's Mr. Glamorous. He loves to move. Good. Good. So again, the same rules. I tend to post in the beginning because I don't want to interfere with his back. So now a little bit left rein. Good. His jaw steps to the left, or his jaw gently goes to the left. Good. And then he can come over his back. Can you see that? Now he can be straight again because his hindquarters are holding his front end up. Make sense? But first, this moves, that turns, that activates this, this steps under, he can lengthen his back. Before they go forward a lot, this has to step under and lengthen the back. They float in the middle. Slightly out right now. Yes, I'm doing a little bit more. Did you notice as I started trotting, he got straighter? But I bend them a little bit more until I can unlock the hindquarters. So any horse can be overbent. You can bend them too much. You understand? What happens when you overbend them? Yeah, exactly. They too, too much neck, and now you lose the effects of the pull in the neck, and you don't get a hindquarters. All right? OK. We'll do that one more time. We're going to start in the walk. Again, if we were to start perfectly in the walk, do we want to start with the horse's head high or, relax, or the back, the top line, long and relaxed? Well, it's like I'm giving you the answer. Sheesh, if you guys get that one wrong, we got some trouble. So we want to have the horse relax their top line. Good. OK, there. You see? So all I'm doing is keeping my chest. What's the challenge of lowering your hands? Oh, it's easy to do this. You drop your hand too much, it's easy to drop your chest. So what I do is I want to envision that my hands are connected to my hips. And I'm going to lower my hands only to the degree that I can feel like I can move forward and keep my chest up. There we go. Good. One, two, three, four. Atta boy. Oh, I guess he relaxed. Good. All right. Now I'm going to pick him up. And I want to feel the shoulders move gently out of the rein. This is the base work. And as I feel that, I feel his shoulders good. And now I want to find what I would say the perfect circle for him at the trot. Shoulder, pole, good. Hindquarters. There we go. Then he comes over his back. My seat brings him forward. And again, look at my reins. There is a connection there. But there is no tension because who is holding himself up? You understand the difference? OK, now. This is stinking demo horse thing. Do a little bit and then do less. Do a little bit and stop. Here, good buddy. Now there's a little sensitivity in cruise. OK, so now as I bring him back, I'm going to sit. No stopping. Good, good. Now as he sits back, the reins should get light. Good. But again, as he starts to sit, my hands are not getting heavier. OK? Now, if I send that forward over his back, moving more forward, he starts to extend out and reach forward. That's when I like to post. You just let him move now. Good. 
All right. Now, because he's wanted to stop on me a few times, I'm going to walk out of the down transition. When they walk, I don't want to feel him crashing to the walk. So I want to walk, and down transitions are actually harder than up transitions. So is the halt. This is a crummy halt. There. Ah. Uh, not. Okay, this ends on the forehand. This ends under, but you see the difference? Okay, your turn. Show us how it's done. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I do. But you want to trot. Or maybe your mare wants to trot. You need to build some attitude. I see. Or maybe you could say you just needed to actually get her moving forward. Building attitude, that's an interesting way to look at impulsion. Okay, shoulders, there, good. Okay, can you feel the inside rein? Good. Okay, is it possible to push the shoulder too far? Well, no, not if you push the shoulder, You'll, you're falling. We're gonna separate leg yield and falling and disengagement from engagement. So the shoulders we can talk about, we can talk about the hips. And, we'll, and I'll discuss that next here, because we've got to talk about the leg yield. That's a big deal. All right, there, 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 there. Can you feel when the shoulders get straight? What do you feel in both, okay, feel your reins. How do your reins feel? Heavy or weightless? Mostly weightless, yes. Now, okay. If a rein becomes heavy, apply a leg. Bring the shoulders back to center. You just have to recognize when your horse is calm, if there's weight in the rein, it's balanced. And use your outside leg. But, yeah, yeah, use your outside leg. I was going to try to say something cheeky, but I couldn't come up with it quick enough. Shoot. You know, I, it happens all the time. You know what I've learned, too, is usually it's best not to tell everybody that. Okay, inside leg. Feel your inside rein. That's it. Good. Now, chest up, hips forward. Now, keep the, there. Now bring that under. Forward. There, there. There you go. Now take that to the trough. You see? Get it right laterally, you'll get it right longitudinally. That's it. Good, good. Let her find it. Now, that's it. You've got to keep her through. She's expecting way too much rein. Can you see this? Look at her doing with her head. Oh, Claudia's going to jerk on that rein. I know it's coming. I'm going to get ready. Now, feel your reins. Feel your inside leg. Connect with your reins. Put your inside there. There. Release. There. Good, good, good. See, if you get it right, you'll feel her carry herself. So, first thing on this work, guys. If you feel weight in the reins, what have I asked you to do? Pull on the reins as hard as you can? No. Use your leg. Use there. There. Use a leg. And I'm not telling you to push the horse to the outside. I want you to sense, like a child's bike seat, guys. If it tips a bit, just move it with your seat and legs. Move it. There you go. Good. The mare's going to need a bit of time for her to believe you're not going to go to your hand. She just thinks you're going to just tighten that rein up. Now, change directions. Go the other way. Left leg. Think about your right seat bone just gently. Connect with your reins. That's it. Good. That right there. Right there we go. Good. And then again, there's so much going on. Her, you know, she really thinks that she needs to be watchful of everything, and I understand that. Well, maybe they will. Good. Inside leg a little bit. Connect with your rein. That's it. There we go. Good. Okay, back to the walk. So you didn't walk on this side, and it's helpful to do that, just to show her the balance. But do you see the idea? The goal is get the shoulders straight with your seat and legs. This helps you ride better. What I notice most people, they ride poorly because they're always using their hands. And guess where your energy goes? Your energy goes to your reins. Now look, it's like a moth to a flame. All of a sudden you're down here because you're overusing your reins. If you think with your seat and legs and you bring the horse up underneath you and your reins are waiting, you're going to sit different. All right? Sure, sure. Well... Well, yeah. They start anticipating that we're going to pull on them, and then these things happen. Okay. Any questions about that? All 
right? How do you do it more? Step one, make sure as you're moving, you keep the reins light with your seat and legs. That's step one. No matter what you're doing, whatever direction you're going. Okay, whether you're walking, trotting, or cantering. Whether you're doing leg heels, it doesn't matter, okay? So I'm just gonna play a little more here. Let's see if I, oh, I'm not gonna stop. You're gonna talk while I'm moving. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You had to get attitude. You know what, I bet you'd get energy if you stopped calling it attitude. Maybe she'd listen. <laughs> no, I understand. Okay, so the more, I'll bet you, the more straight she gets. So here again, guys, keeping the inside shoulder up, keeping the jaw rotated, then my seat activates the inside line, and then we come over our back. Forward. Keep the hind leg active. There we go. Okay, so how hard is it to, for a horse to go forward when there's no tension in the reins? They feel no resistance in the reins. It's pretty easy. Good. Add more impulsion, more throughness, more over his back. Good. Keep moving, buddy. That's it. Okay, now walk forward. You can see that's a piece we're working on still. He likes to shut her down. Okay, so what I'm saying is you're actually working on it because you need to get the brace out of her shoulders. And you put the brace in by using your reins when you shouldn't. And now just like I talked about Claudia pulling on that rein, when I'm walking like this, it's hard to freely move. So half the time, she's doing something with her head, which is great brace. Now, that's the technical answer. The good, you know, the answer we normally think about is when you ask, get a change, follow through, you know, don't stop until you get the answer. That's a bit part of it. Because a lot of times, because there's resistance, we start nagging. Okay, and that, that's really what stops a nice change, but that's only part of the question. If, if you're still leaving brace in the shoulders, think of it like a canal, and there's rocks in it. And every time she loses her balance, she stiffens that shoulder. Okay, and then that shoulder stiffens, now the water can't get through, or the, the, excuse me, the rocks pile up, and there's rocks. Oh my goodness, I just wrecked that example. Did you guys get that? I think I confused myself. Okay, there's a canal that has rocks in it. Water piles up behind. This is no different than feeling when you're asking for impulsion. But you now have to add enough impulsion to get over that rock. And then that's kind of like your legs on all the time. And then, then if you back off a little bit, you're behind the rock again. Move the resistance, move the rock. Okay? But also follow through when you ask. But also recognize when are you running into resistance you didn't produce. You're going to tell by what she does with her head. That tells you it's a balance issue. If she's through, okay, if she's through and she's coming through her back, okay, shoulders, good. Softness in the inside rein, good. Inside hind is through with my seat, good. Okay, now there's nothing in the way. Trot. See, nothing there. So we can trot. You see, there's, there's freedom in his motion. And look, you can see that I'm not necessarily holding him up. And then the canter is the same. Can I sit in such a way where we can feel that balance and make the change? So my reins are light, but I'm allowing him to come through himself. Back to the trot, forward. We're still working on that one throughness and relaxation in the reins. And that's when the movement gets pretty fun. But as the movement gets more observably engaging, the reins should stay very light. There we go. That's a better walk. And now I'll halt forward. That's it. Make sense? So as he does more, 
The engagement stays up. The reins stay light. I don't do more to get it. And how much is the personality of Oh, it's a big part of it. Some, so the question was, how much do you think depends upon the individuality of the horse? A bunch of it. Because some horses are more filled with life. But what I see here, the way you're thinking about using your reins, plugs those shoulders up. I'm really interested. You do a bunch of this groundwork and you get that nice and free. Then you add your impulsion, start timing it, get the balance, add impulsion, get the balance, add impulsion. Stop pushing resistance, pushing energy at the resistance to get her to go. But then when you ask follow through, set the timing up better, I think you're going to see a difference. Well, you just need to see the value of it. I think so. I think so. You don't feel bad about it. It's not an emotion. You just got to get kind of clear about it because you got to see the future. Don't get caught up necessarily in the negativity of the moment. See where you're going. Have a free, beautiful feeling of what you're trying to achieve. All right. Very good. Okay, I think I'm done, right? Am I supposed to be done? Yes. All right. Okay, guys, I hope that I fashioned this lesson a little differently. And I wanted to be able to use Cruise and show some things and demonstrate, but I also really wanted to incorporate that into this. Actually, played out really well because this in itself is really where I see people struggle at the beginning. Okay, and so, so we were able to discuss what is the biggest problem with reins? It's not reins. Okay, it's how we're sitting and how we're using our legs. And if you can use your body to help a horse get straight, the reins stay very light. So I just did a little bit quick there, but you know, so you go to the canter, reins stay light. Go down the rail, over his back, move the trot out, bring it. Reins never got heavy because he's starting to fold himself. So that doesn't plug up the shoulders in. Is that clear? Yeah, super important. From there, follow through with your leg. All right, so I think I'm already running over. Guys, thank you so much for, for having me here. I hope that you have enjoyed some of my process, observing what I'm doing with my horses. Every, all of my horses are at different stages, and there's stuff that are, you know, is going real well, and there's stuff I'm still working on. That's just the way it goes. We're going to do a draw. We're not going to ask questions now. What I'm going to do is come back to my booth and visit. I'll be there till the end of the deal, and I'm going to spend as much time as you guys need asking those questions. All right. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed the time. Hope you learned something and look forward to visiting with all of you more. Thanks a lot.